I listen to when I'm with a client, I'm with that client 100%. My mind is not on what I'm going to cook for dinner, what I had for breakfast, you know, if I need to work out this day. My mind is not on, you know, what did my kids do? My mind is focused 100% on that person at that time, and they have my full undivided attention. I'm listening for what I need to say to this person at this time in their life, especially if they're suicidal and all that kind of stuff, you know. And so I have to be tuned in to help. Right. I love it. So So if, let's do some hypothetical things now, some hypothetical situations. A young, a young woman just had, um, that just has young children that, um, maybe the youngest one is now going to kindergarten and she's just starting to reenter the workforce in her profession. What kind of advice would you give her so that she avoids overwhelm? Well, (laughs) excuse me. It depends on her situation and her support system. Um, A young mom who's returning back to work has to have a support system. And um, if she doesn't, one of the things that I've done with uh, women um, in coaching and then helping other coaches uh, with situations is um, meetup.com is a great place for um, almost anyone. You know, anyone that's listening, meetup.com, if you've never gone on there, you should really try them out because it's a place where you can connect with people that can support you and doing whatever it is that you desire to do, whether it's dreams, becoming an entrepreneur, you know, being a mom that's returning back to work. Um, there are groups on there that can help moms, you know, and so there are tons, there are thousands of mom groups out there. Uh, the other thing is she also has to find time for herself. Being a young mom, been there, done that, with children at home, you know, I um, was married, but my husband traveled a lot. And so I felt like a single mom for so long. And I remember when I went back to work and it was exhausting. You know, there were times when I just wanted to choke the kids, Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) you know, and I didn't have anyone to help me, you know, or to guide me, you know, um, to, to, you know, to guide me with the wisdom that they had to help me not to be overwhelmed. And so I would encourage a mom like that to tap into resources um, you know, uh, that help moms and then tap into resources that help moms who are returning back to work. Or if she can't find anything, let's say she's just out somewhere in Texas and there's only two or three houses out there. <laughs> <laughs> what she could do is create something. You know, I believe that there is an answer for everything, you know, and there's no reason at all to be overwhelmed like that when we have so much help in this world today and we have so many resources. And the problem is, is that a lot of people don't know the resources are there. Right. They are there. That's true. You You know, know, a a lot of times too, I think that, that we think that it's a sign of weakness if we accept help. You know, I I experienced that with a lot of my clients, especially my African-American men and my Hispanic men that I worked with, because, again, I did a lot of anger management. And one of the things that they would say to me is that, you know, um, you know, I'm a black man. I'm supposed to take care of my own house. And, you know, Hispanic guys were the same way. And my thing was, you are, you know, a black man. And I get that I'm a black woman. However, your life is screwed up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, it's not going to get better. So either you accept the help or you reject it. Should you decide to reject it, then you're going to wind up worse off. Then the decision is yours. You know, mm-hmm. and so every time, you know, I've never had anyone walk out. And um, every time they stayed and they realized how good it was and how beneficial it was, not just to them, but to the whole family. And I always get referrals from, you know, all the men that I've worked with. I had men driving four hours one way on the road to come see me. And I was in Sterling Heights, Michigan at the time. And I had men that were all the way up north. And they would drive down 
you know, three, four hours on the road. And I thought they were nuts because I would never do that. (laughs) I'm just saying. But you were always (laughs) with you. (laughs) <laughs> but eight hours on wow, the road. Wow, that's you know, amazing. Um, yes. That's pretty. But you know, cool. I'm all about, you know, life changing, you know, change, helping people to change their lives for the better. Right. Right. Okay. And here's that's what another I'm all about, scenario. Helping people to change their lives. Yep. So here's another scenario a woman or a man, it doesn't really matter, is, uh, kind of forced into retirement. You know, so many companies now are, are letting the, the highest salaried people go and bringing in new people to avoid paying those high salaries. So a lot of people are being forced into retirement. They're not ready to retire. What kind of advice would you give them? What kind of coping skills or just what would you say? Well, um, I used to uh, supervise interns at uh, Oakland University, and we had a wide variety of uh, people that we worked with, you know, from um, adolescents to uh, older adults. And my thing is to them has always been, number one is not the end of the world. And number two, everything happens for a reason and when it's time. Mm-hmm. And now it's time for you to take control of your life and do what you've always wanted to do. I remember one woman in particular, she um, had been in management for many years, for decades. And when she was let go, one of the things that I helped her do was to see her gift. Her gift was needle pointing. So I had her to bring in some of her needle pointing and I realized that this woman had a gift. I mean, she really did. Absolutely beautiful stuff. I would never attempt because I don't have that kind of patience. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what happened is I had her to take it to the flea market and she was selling them like crazy. She couldn't even keep up with the orders. Wow. You know, you never know what's inside of you. Another woman, you know, she used to quote unquote paint. So I had her to bring her artwork in just one piece. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, my God. And so she was like, oh, nobody will ever buy this. So I took a $20 bill out of my pocket and I gave it to her. <laughs> and I said, you have just sold your first piece. Now, honestly, it was worth much more than I only had $20 in my pocket. <laughs> so and, um, that's so beautiful. The next two, weeks, two weeks later, this woman comes back to my office. I have her stand in the middle of the office and I twirl her around. I said, what do you see? Uh, your artwork? I said, okay, twirl again. What do you see? Steal your artwork. I said, woman, look at that painting right there. It was hers in a frame. She didn't even recognize it. I'll be darned. (laughs) Isn't that something? So a lot of times people look at, they look at the retirement thing as being the end of the world. It's not. It's time to reinvent yourself. It's scary. It It is is very scary. And for situations like that, I strongly recommend they have a coach. You know, people, you know, are like, I don't want a coach. I don't want a therapist. I strongly encourage it. I've had my own coaches. Mm -hmm. I encourage it because you have a second set of eyes. Right. And a second set of ears and another heart, you know, that can look at your situation and see things that you have not seen for a long time. Right. Right. It, it can help you revitalize those things. Yes. So you you helped those those people in particular rediscover that inner genius that you're talking about. Yes, definitely. And so many times we just are not dwelling in that inner genius by working for somebody else. Even, you know, even entrepreneurs, if they're not in a line of work that they absolutely love, they're, they may be in the family business and it's not their passion. It's the same thing. They're not working with, in, with their inner genius, right? Right, right. So what if we don't think we have an inner genius? How do we get in touch with it? Hire a coach. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things I find about coaches and even counselors, you know, therapists as well, is we are trained and, you know, the more experience we have, the better we are at working with people. 
And uh, so I strongly encourage you to get outside of your own head and hire another head. Yes, I said hire. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) Hire, Hire another head, another heart that has different thoughts and different, you know, um, ways of looking at things than you do, because what do they say? Two heads are better than one. Yes. Two heads are better than one when it comes to coaching. Now Mm -hmm. I will say this. If you have hired a coach and you absolutely hated that coach, um, hello, hire another one. Right. (laughs) Yep. There's one out there for you. Do this thing for you until you get what you want. This is not about the coach. If you need therapy, this is not about the therapist. You keep going because this thing called life is about you doing the best that you can for yourself and your life and your family. Right. And you owe it to yourself to do the best that you can, however many times it takes for you to get it done. Right. And that's right. It's, It's always so important to, to function at a high level in the highest frequency that you can, because you'll be more efficient, you'll be happier, and you'll be able to help people more. So sometimes you need, and and so many people don't realize why they need a coach. It's, you know how sometimes you'll be walking and maybe you'll trip and fall. Isn't it easier when someone else helps you up? Oh, yeah. (laughs) And it's that simple. You know, it's, and I know I didn't think I needed a coach when I was in real estate. And somebody kept telling me that it was when coaching was brand new. There weren't even any personal coaches yet, I don't think. But this woman uh, that I, that I had as a coach I went from making 80,000 a year to 150 the years I worked with her. Mm -hmm. And it was simply because she helped me see things a different way, exactly what you just said. And that's how life is. You know, you have to treat life as your most precious job and your most precious commodity, right? When I first thought about becoming a coach um, and coming from the therapy background, things are definitely different and I needed clarity. Mm -hmm. I had to, when I felt that I was so stuck, I felt like I was stuck in quicksand that I couldn't get out of all the tons of ideas that I had. Mm -hmm. So I hired a coach to dig through some of that stuff to make sense of it. You know, and it was one of the best things I could have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you can't justify the money, trust me, you'll make more. Right. Right. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun. So what what makes you such a dynamite woman? Where does all this energy come from and this the wonderful philosophy of life that you have, not only about yourself, but about how you feel about people and life in general. Where does, where does this come from? Oh, wow. That's a heavy question. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of it comes from my belief system. And, and I'm not just talking about, um, I'm a very spiritual woman and me falling in love with life um, my story has a lot of uh, negative things that happen and all that is I'm sure many of your listeners have experienced in their own lives and whatnot. So I come from, you know, being abused in multiple ways and I won't get into that on this show. But after coming through that, all of that stuff and almost losing my life and wanting to take my life and, you know, all these things, one day I woke up and I realized something so simple get to live this life one time and there are people that are crossing my path every day and many of them need just a little help a one seed and I only get to touch a life once sometimes sometimes I'll never see that person again and I want to be in the best place that I can possibly be myself for my family and for all of those lives that I touch You know, every day that I'm meeting people, I'm meeting people in the grocery store, meeting people when I'm out at the gas station and conversations come up 
everywhere I go, it's kind of annoying sometimes. And my husband laughs, laughs at it because he's like, you can't go any place without someone coming up to you telling you their life story. I don't know what I have written. 